Hello, this short presentation is aimed at answering some of the questions that many students have when they are thinking about joining a group at the UCF Counseling Center, such as what is group counseling and if it will help me. We will also discuss some of the misconceptions about group therapy and the process of joining a group offered through the Counseling Center. What is group therapy? Many of the personal problems we face stem from our past and present relationships with others and how we feel about those relationships. When our relationships aren't what we would like them to be, we may experience feelings of depression, anxiety, and self-doubt. Group therapy gives us an opportunity to sort out questions and concerns we have about our relationships and ourselves. In a therapy group, approximately 6 to 10 students meet with one or more group leaders, typically once a week for 75 minutes. Group members talk about a variety of issues and concerns. The primary task of members is to learn as much as possible about the way they relate to each other. This learning occurs through sharing perceptions, thoughts, feelings, trying out new behaviors, and giving and receiving feedback. Thus, groups have an interpersonal focus and are especially appropriate for individuals who are interested in working on interpersonal concerns and relationship skills. Why would someone join a group instead of individual counseling? Your therapist may refer you to a group if he or she feels that your needs would be best served in a group atmosphere. Sometimes this results from matching a specific concern with a topic-oriented group designed specifically to address this problem. Group therapy may also help individuals deal with a relationship or family concern, communicate more effectively, express feelings, adjust to college life, overcome shyness, develop assertiveness, or make friends. Group therapy is often the most direct way to provide the type of contact needed to work on these issues. How would a group benefit me? The group is able to offer support or alternatives in a way that the difficulty becomes resolved and new interpersonal skills are learned. A group allows a person to gain self-awareness and develop new ways of relating to people. Group members often find comfort in realizing they are not alone in the problems they are experiencing. It can be encouraging to find out that others have similar struggles and have worked through similar concerns. If you can understand and work out your relationships in the group, there can be enormous carryover to your outside relationships. What do I talk about in the group? Letting the group members know why you initially came to counseling and sharing what you hope to get from the group is a good place to start. It is important to tell people in the group what you want from them, whether it is support, gentle confrontation, or just to be heard and understood. The first few sessions of a group usually focus on establishing trust. During this time, members work to establish a level of safety that allows them to talk personally and honestly with one another. You will most likely benefit and feel most satisfied if you talk about your feelings. Unexpressed emotions are a major reason why people experience difficulties, and the group can become a safe place for you to express them. Group leaders and other group members can help you be more honest with yourself and others as you explore your emotions. How much you choose to disclose and participate in the group is ultimately your decision, but the more you share and interact, the more likely you are to feel better. People who benefit most from group are usually the ones who accept a sense of responsibility for making the group work by sharing their concerns and speaking up when they have reactions to issues that other members in the group are talking about. What type of group do I choose? Group therapy is usually made up of six to ten people with one or more trained professionals serving as the leaders. There are various formats that groups can have and they vary by semester. Groups are either classified as support or therapy focused. Support groups are usually focused on giving members support and encouragement through a shared group concern or issue. Therapy groups are more focused on self-exploration and awareness of interpersonal dynamics thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and reactions to change an interpersonal concern. Groups can be themed or non-themed. This means that either a group focuses on several interpersonal issues or, and dynamics, or they may be specific and focused on a single issue or theme. Groups can be structured or non-structured or both. Structured groups follow a set protocol and have interactive exercises that may start discussions. Non-structured or process-oriented groups focus on group issues that emerge as members disclose personal information. Members focus on giving and receiving feedback and becoming more aware of their own interpersonal dynamics. Lastly, groups are either open or closed. Open groups are usually ongoing groups, 
and they let group members join throughout the semester. Closed groups only stay open until a certain time during the semester, and then no additional members will be added throughout the course of the semester. When you meet people for the first time, it is hard to know what to say and how much to trust them. Trusting is a process that develops as group members take risks and increasingly share more of themselves. It helps to remember that groups are usually small and that other group members are usually struggling with similar concerns. Letting the group know that you are uncomfortable can be a first step and often promotes a useful group discussion about the issue of trust among its members. All group members are expected to respect the confidentiality of the group. Group members are asked to make a commitment to protect each other's confidentiality by agreeing not to divulge information that would violate the identity of others outside the group. While the group leaders cannot guarantee absolute confidentiality, we find that members are usually very respectful of each other's privacy. What will be expected of me as a group member? Each group may establish its own ground rules, but here are some general guidelines that are important. Regular attendance is essential for establishing group cohesion and commitment. If you miss a session, please inform the group as far in advance as possible. Share the talk time with the other group members. Talk about what is bothering you as openly and honestly as you can. Give the group a fair chance by attending at least three sessions before deciding to discontinue the group. If you decide to leave the group, attend a final session to say goodbye to the other group members. Here are some common misconceptions about group therapy. The first, I will be forced to disclose all of my deepest thoughts and feelings. You control what, how much, and when you share with the group. Most people find that when they feel safe enough to share what is troubling them, a group can be very helpful and affirming. We encourage you not to share what you are not ready to disclose. However, you can also gain awareness by listening to others and thinking about how their experiences may apply to your life. The second misconception, group therapy will take longer than individual therapy. Actually, group therapy is often more efficient than individual therapy. You can benefit from the group even during sessions when you say very little but listen carefully to the other group members. You will find that you have much in common with them and as they work on a concern, you can learn about yourself. The third misconception. I will be verbally attacked by the leaders or by other group members. Group leaders are present to develop a safe environment. Feedback is often difficult to hear. As group members come to trust and accept one another, they generally experience feedback and gentle confrontation as positive and useful, as if it were coming from a caring friend. The fourth misconception, I won't be able to share in a group. Most people are anxious about being able to talk in a group. However, almost without exception, within a few sessions, people find that they begin to talk openly and honestly. You will most likely get a lot of support when you begin to talk in a group. The last misconception, group therapy is not as good as individual therapy. Group therapy is often recommended because it offers several important advantages over individual therapy. In a group, an individual may learn how they relate to others get feedback from others, obtain support, experience a sense of acceptance and belonging, and discover that they are not alone in dealing with the difficulties they are experiencing. How do I join a group? If you are interested in joining a particular group, a counselor or the receptionist will schedule a pre-group screening appointment for you with the group counselors. This appointment gives you a chance to meet the counselors, ask questions, discuss your concerns and goals, and determine whether the group is a good fit for your needs. We invite you to browse our list of current groups and inquire about those that are of interest to you by directly co contacting the Counseling Center at 407-823-2811. Thank you.